The Night Beat starts right now. Frustration brewing. San Antonio Police Chief William McManus, not the only local law enforcement leader that's questioning the Bear County District Attorney. The changes other leaders in Bear County would like to see. New challenges with a familiar problem here in Bear County. How a summer filled with triple digit degree days has pushed nonprofits to fight food insecurity. He's a small animal that's making a big difference here in South Texas. We're going to show you how and introduce you to this little guy. But first, we've heard the frustration from San Antonio Police Chief William McManus. Now, several other local police chiefs are echoing his concerns with the Bear County District Attorney's Office. Yeah, McManus's questions about prosecuting violent criminals really came to a head with five recent shootings involving his officers. And as the night team's Patty Santos explains, several of his colleagues agree that the current system isn't working. I've had conversations with police chiefs and officers in recent weeks and in the past who have questioned the DA's office. They tell me it's frustrating for the department to build cases and then have them rejected and seeing those suspects walk free. After five shootings with several police officers hurt by suspects known to police, SAPD Chief William McManus blew the horn on the Bear County criminal system's current situation. Something needs to change. We can't continue doing this. We can't continue to, to um, endanger the public by leaving these folks on the street. McManus is not alone. Several police chiefs elsewhere in Bear County say they have their own examples of drug and violent crime cases dropped or the suspects released on low bonds. It happened just a few weeks ago with the Universal City Police case. I don't pretend to, to work in their lane at the DA's office, so I don't I don't know all the ins and outs of that that particular uh, job and what they look at. Uh, but certainly on the surface, it doesn't sit well with us. What are you hearing from the other chiefs about what's been well, going on? Same thing that they they're frustrated. Converse Police Chief Bobby Lane says their fears came true. It could have been Converse, could have been Universal City, could have been Live Oak. You know, any of our, our you know, our, I see our brothers in blue could have been any one of them. I'm not sure exactly what the answer is, but I know this. What we're doing isn't working. Lane adds McManus said what needed to be said. Now it's time to stop pointing fingers and look forward. If you had a coffee with him today, what would you say to the D.A.? Uh, me, I would tell I would first of all I'd tell him, look, you know, we're here in the same, we're doing the same here to do the same thing. You know, we're here to support you. You're here to support us. Let's work together. And by the way, Chief Lane thinks all Bear County law enforcement chiefs should be invited to have a meeting with the judges and the DA's office, but he thinks that meeting should be private to allow for a very frank conversation. Now, Judge Peter Sakai has said there's going to be a meeting here coming up in the few, next few weeks, but he hasn't said who's going to be invited. Patty Santos, KSAT 12 News. And now to a bizarre chain of events playing out in day seven of suspended Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton's impeachment trial. The day ended with Ken Paxton's lawyers making a sudden motion for the impeachment articles to be dismissed. The defense team then changing their mind and retracting that motion. The motion would have needed the approval of 16 senators. In another turn of events, Laura Olson, the woman who was allegedly involved in an affair with Paxton, was set to testify but was then deemed unavailable to testify. Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick, who's presiding over the trial, said lawyers from both sides agreed on Olson's status. A lot of clouds out there, but not much in terms of rain. Though over the past half hour, one shower did pop up just south of Seguin, right along the Guadalupe Wilson County line here. This is drifting off to the northeast. I don't expect it to last very long. It's just east of Lavernia. What we're really watching is areas off to the west, especially closer to the Rio Grande, where we have a better chance of rain tonight. But in particular, we're watching for storms to come together and potentially, potentially big if here actually organize. We think it's a very low end chance. Most of this should fall apart as it heads toward the Rio Grande, but we'll watch it and let you know that's the only thing that could boost rain chances a little tonight. However, parts of our seven day forecast stand out more than others in terms of rain chances. We'll jump into that in a moment. Boy, do we need the rain. Thank you, Adam. The heat turned down in some of the parts of South Texas, but doesn't mean the threat of fires have gone away. As a matter of fact, crews on the coast dealing with a wildfire spanning 75 acres near Aransas Pass. The National Weather Service even issuing evacuation notices and a fire warning after it broke out. Crews in the air on the ground have been battling the flames for hours now, and at last check, that fire is 80% contained. 
Now back here at home, San Antonio City Council members are finalizing tweaks to the city's budget, like adding more money for animal care services. Also, adding around-the-clock coverage from a new mental health team. That's also going to make the list. But once again, a proposed fund that could, in part, help pay for trips out of state for women to get legal abortions. That really caused the most controversy. Now, so tomorrow, the council is going to vote on whether to include that in the final version of the budget. There's a lot going into the new city budget. We have a full breakdown for you on KSAT.com. Just look for this article. It's right on our homepage. A record breaking summer of heat and high temperatures has forced San Antonio nonprofits to seek new solution, solutions to an ongoing problem. We're talking about food insecurity. Night team's Avery Everett shows us exactly how they're doing it. There's food insecurity all over. An issue spread across San Antonio. Food is medicine, it's culture, it's tradition, it's love. And when a community doesn't have access to that, they feel alone, they feel forgotten. Food insecurity comes with the lack of access to fresh and affordable food. But with the summer heat and continued drought, food production and sustainability are a growing concern. How do we um, create the infrastructure and the capacity within our communities to have food sovereignty, meaning that we're in control of our food system, because right now we're not in control of our food system. Groups like Gardopia are working to increase the number of fresh and affordable food options using urban farming to help support the city of San Antonio. But the food bank says that food insecurity exists all across our city, but there are certain areas that stick out. When you think of the 410 loop, um, it's the far west side sweeping over to the far east side. Identifying issue areas across the city was step one. Now the San Antonio Food Bank says it wants to help find long-term solutions. We're filling the gaps, right? We're trying to make sure that someone that's food insecure is, is made secure, but, but we don't have the food resources to, to solve that long-term. And Gardopia Garden says that can start with urban farming giving people the means of production. So if there's a vacant lot next to you or in your neighborhood, you and your neighbors could come together and cultivate it. There isn't one answer, especially after an unpredictable summer. But these nonprofits agree doing nothing is no longer an option. Avery Everett, KSAT 12 News. Now we're switching gears. We're going to take a really close look at this woman here on your screen. Have you seen her? Her name is Joyce Owens. She's been missing since Monday and police are asking for your help to find her. She was last seen on Rigsby Avenue near Tilly Drive. She's about 5'6 and has a scar on her left arm. If you know where she is, call SAPD's Missing Persons Unit and that number there is 210-207-7660. Let's go now to your Nightbeat News Flash and look at some of today's big headlines. First, a federal appeals court will hear oral arguments about Texas floating border buoys on October 5th. Those buoys installed as part of Operation Lone Star back in July. Since then, the Department of Justice has sued the state and argues Texas has no authorization to put them there in the first place. Governor Greg Abbott has argued Texas has the constitutional authority to keep the buoys in the Rio Grande. After a week's long manhunt, convicted murderer Danilo Cavalcante is back behind bars. Pennsylvania State Police have been searching for him since he escaped prison at the end of August. Over those two weeks on the run, he'd been spotted several times, stole a van, changed his appearance. Cavalcante was convicted of killing his former girlfriend last month, faces life in prison for that, chain, for that charge, and will now face an additional charge of felony escape. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. We all noticed this, right? It was a shock. Gas prices up across the country, and that includes, of course, Bear County. And as you can imagine, people are not happy about it. Just my budget. You know, it's a shame I have to pay more. I wish that they would uh, go down. Groceries, gas, um, cost of living, just everything in general is just really getting out of hand. Interest rates, yeah. So how does Bear County compare to the state and the national average for gas? So look on your screen. AAA reports that as of today, the average price for gas in the county is slightly above the statewide average. But for the U.S., it's a lot higher. Gas is averaging about $3.85 a gallon. We've seen historic low water levels at Canyon Lake this summer. Why business owners there say you should still come out and visit. Still plenty to do. And he's a small horse, but he's making a big difference here in South Texas, how he's helping people 
with special needs. Prepare for cuteness overload. Just take a look at this little guy where you're going to see him in a moment. His name is Gus. Standing at just three feet tall, he's a miniature horse making a big difference. Yeah, as the night team's John Paul Barajas reports, originally nobody wanted Gus, but now he has a home and a purpose, helping those with special needs at Hope Reigns of Texas. Good. Whoopsie. That's okay. You Good. may not realize it, Easy. but you're watching a young lady make progress one step at a time with a little help from a miniature horse. Yeah, Gus is a friendly little guy. He, he has never met a stranger, and that's one amazing thing about him that we love. It really lights up everybody's world when they meet him. Gus is one of the newest team members at Hope Reigns of Texas, providing hippotherapy, meaning physical, occupational, or speech therapy, with the help of a horse. He joined the nonprofit in May of 2022, and he's already becoming a fan favorite. Gus, like Gus! Gus, <laughs> like Gus! Gus and the other horses at Hope Reigns of Texas work with children and adults who have special needs, as well as wounded warriors. And they're also having to find their balance. So they're, they're sensory, their neuromotor, their cognitive systems, all having to work together while they're on top of this horse. Gus is too small to ride, but he offers therapy in other ways. So for us, I mean, you know, we can, we can pinch that nice and easy, slip it on right there, and easy peasy. Braiding hair, clipping on these little bows, all that's working on their fine motor. And his stature is a strength when easing people into the world of horses. Very unique because his size is lovable. It's just, he, he makes you know it's okay to be little bitty. With all the love Gus gets now, it's hard to imagine that at one point, nobody wanted him. Until Kyle Hackley rescued him from a Florida ranch and brought him to stay at Hope Rains in Bilverde. I looked in those big brown eyes and I knew right then he was extraordinarily special. Now he provides care, calm and companionship for those facing Yay! challenges. I think he likes people more than other horses sometimes. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about you. <laughs> John Paul Barajas, ASAP 12 News. We love Gus, Gus here. Okay, now we want to give you a quick update to tell you. A few moments ago, we told you about this woman, jo Joyce Owens. We told you that she was missing. Well, she's been found, so that's good news. She is safe and sound tonight. Very good news. All right, the weather finally starting to cool off some, but the drought has no end in sight yet. Yeah, the water levels at Canyon Lake are now at a record low, and the businesses in that area are drying up with it. That's why Sam Painter's business has called Grand Canyon Lake home for more than two decades. But despite these record low water levels, he says the lake, listen, it's still open for business. So he wants you and your family to come out. You can still come out to Canyon Lake. You can have a great time. You can come out and barbecue with your family. You can hit a kayak. You can hit a paddleboard. You can come out here with a captain boat without a problem and still be safe. OK, just a reminder that if you plan to bring your boat to Canyon Lake, Ramp 17, Ramp 17, that's the only one that's open right now. All right, we're talking about a drought, so let's talk about weather. Live cam outside right now, 82 degrees. A lot of people in a lot of different places need some rain, Adam. Yeah, we could all use it. The ground could use it. The aquifer could use it. The reservoirs could use it. We all want the rain. Now, through the rest of the night, we have our rain chances pegged at 30%. We kept them there. We don't have a lot of confidence in that complex really coming together in Mexico. That's the only hope we have to raise those chances basically on short notice later on tonight. But it looks like we're going to stay at 30%. So some isolated pop up showers, kind of like what I showed you earlier. And let's go to the radar. This is what we're watching. Authority radar showing some activity in Mexico. Most of this is likely to dissipate and fall apart as it heads eastward, kind of like that little thunderstorm just south of Rock Springs over the past hour had some lightning and then Poof, it's gone. It just dissipated. There is that very low end chance that some of this could actually organize and head eastward through the night and even the morning commute, but that remains very unlikely at this time. The situation with our weather pattern, it's good. You see rain across Texas. It's an unsettled weather pattern. It's just not very well defined, which means there's some uncertainty. There's little features that can pop up very quickly to cause some rain or even 
prohibit rain from developing. We have a boundary that's overhead right now, so that helps a little bit. And this is the area we've been watching. West Texas, Mexico, and right there along the Rio Grande. Hopefully we can get a little more organization, but right now it looks fairly unlikely. The steering wind, however, would carry some of that our way and embedded within this steering flow aloft, these winds I'm showing you are little ripples in the flow that we're gonna to continue to have that could kickstart an isolated shower basically any time, any day, just highly isolated and not gonna add up to much. Our biggest potential, that is, Friday evening and Friday night. Now the timing of that may shift a little bit, but that's when we have our best shot at more numerous showers and storms. Here's just a rough representation of one of the computer models showing that we could get a complex to move in from the north. And it might even be in time to impact Friday night football and big game coverage. So we'll keep you updated on that. Of course, we do look to the tropics for help with moisture. No luck for any rain moving our way. We have three systems out there. Hurricane Margo, we've got a 90% chance of development way out there closer to Africa. That's headed into the central Atlantic and Hurricane Lee just south of Bermuda. It is impacting the island of Bermuda. Category two storm right now. Max sustained winds at 105. It's headed to the north, pretty much due north. The center of it, the eye passing just west of Bermuda. And this is going to impact parts of New England with a one to three foot storm surge. Even Cape Cod here, that area could see up to two to three feet of storm surge. And this is going to be about a tropical storm strength as it hits eastern Canada. The center of it hits eastern Canada. All right, let's talk temps. 93 are high today. Our third day in a row below 100. <laughs> That's a lot to say compared to what we've been through. Now, Catula, sorry, 103, Victoria, 101, and Laredo, 103. But you look elsewhere, and we have that cooler air. Lubbock, Amarillo, 69 for high temperatures. Even Abilene, 78. Some cooler air, but also the clouds helping out a lot. So they were a good 10 to 17 degrees below average just to the north of us. We're not going to tap into that air. I'm sorry. We'll be below 100 though. 75 in the morning, 87 at noon, 96 the high temperature. That's here in San Antonio. 97 Divine and Bandera, 94 in Bulverde, New Braunfels 96, Nixon Smiley 99, along with Floresville. Down toward Crystal City, Carrizo Springs, Catula, you'll be about triple digits next few days. But notice our high temperatures below 100, even with full sunshine as we get into next week. I like the 50% chance of rain. The timing, yes. though, you know. And it's a fluid situation with this unsettled pattern. We will be changing those rain chances, so check back in. Fluid situation. I knew you were going to pick up on yeah, that. I yes, I heard you. Did. I saw what he did there. <laughs> Hi, Larry. Hello. So Monday, we had an interesting <laughs> conversation about uh, the Cowboys, right, uh -huh. because of the Jets. So now they're preparing differently now that Aaron Rodgers is gone. Yeah, but all the Cowboys will tell you, at least the ones that we talked to today in the locker room, that the Jets are still a very solid football team, despite the fact that Aaron Rodgers is not going to play for them for the rest of the season. Uh, coming up, we got more on that. Plus, C.J. Stroud, Houston Texans rookie, is getting ready for his regular season home debut. Coming up. I would say pure domination on uh, all three phases of the game, offense, defense, and special teams. So it was fun to be a part of, for sure. That's Terrence Steele and his assessment of the Cowboys' season opening win at the Giants in Big Board Sports. Football coverage brought to you by Davis Law Firm. Dallas Cowboys linebacker Micah Parsons, a.k.a. the Lion, ate Sunday night at the New York Giants. He had one of the Cowboys' seven sacks during the boys' 40 to nothing season opening win. Now the 1-0 Cowboys are getting ready to host the 1-0 New York Jets, who beat the Bills Monday night 22-16. Jets QB Aaron Rodgers is done for the rest of the season with an Achilles injury, but the Jets still have the Cowboys' attention. Absolutely. I mean, first and foremost, the Jets is a great team. Um, you know, you look at that defense, you know, from offense perspective, uh, how high they play. But uh, that's week one. You take every week at a time. Hey, we had a great week, but we came in here on Tuesday, Monday, watch the film, flush it behind us, and get ready for the next opponent. Um, you set it right on the head, staying even killed, not, never get too high, never get too low, uh, because it's a long season. I mean, it's Rodgers, so I'm sure it uh, affects the game a little bit. But uh, I mean, they're still, you know, an NFL team, so I'm still going to come out and, you know, play as hard as they can. So I mean, it's always going to be a challenge for us. 
Cooks, who had two catches for 22 yards in his Cowboys debut, popped up on the injury list with a knee injury, and he did not practice today. Texans rookie quarterback C.J. Stroud didn't play all that badly Sunday at the Ravens in his regular season debut. His first career pass and completion was to himself after the Ravens batted the ball in the air and right to Stroud. The rook went 28 of 44 for 242 yards, no touchdowns and no interceptions in the Texans 25 to 9 loss. Now Stroud is getting ready to make his regular season debut at NRG stadium yeah man i'm excited uh i know this is my first uh regular season game in houston and i can't wait to see everybody show up and, and be loud man and and uh, hopefully be quiet when we're offense uh, uh but uh on all jokes aside man just i'm excited to, to finally uh try to stamp something special in houston here um that we've been working really hard and um i'm, I'm excited to see everybody come out and support because uh, we need them just like they they're wanting us to be great we got to uh, hope hopefully they come out and be great for us being loud and and being proud so i'm excited to see that texans will host the colts sunday at noon at nrg stadium and india is favored by one it is a great time to be a West Campus student athlete. Earlier this month, the varsity football team earned their first win since the 2007 season, and now the athletic department is $70,000 richer. KSAT 12 Sports stopped by the Cougars football practice last week to give the varsity team some love for that dub, and our report caught the attention of a couple with big hearts. They reached out to the Cougars and donated 70 k to the West Campus High School Athletics Department. They decided to uh, to donate seventy thousand um, dollars, which just it just blew my mind once they you know once they they told me that and uh, you know they they really you know I spoke to them this morning and and they didn't you know want us to to or want me to mention their names uh, they wanted everything to be you know uh, all glory to God and and keep the focus on the kids which is just makes it that much more special in my opinion um, you know for these people to make such a tr uh, tremendous contribution uh, an investment in our kids and you know not want any recognition for it uh that's just it just you got tremendous people in this world and these people were truly amazing the one and two west campus cougars will play at the two and one austin achieve polar bears friday night at seven it was a bad and then a good day for the texas rangers after the break Texas Rangers right-hander Max Scherzer will miss the rest of the regular season because of a strained muscle in his shoulder. Rangers general manager Chris Young says it's also unlikely that Scherzer would be able to pitch in the postseason if Texas qualifies for the first time since 2016. He left last night's game at Toronto in the sixth inning of a victory. So Rangers at the Blue Jays again tonight for game three, that four game series. And this one was all Texas. Top of the fourth inning, Nathaniel Lowe smacks a three run homer to center field and the Rangers lead four to nothing. Robbie Gross when we hit a two run touch them all in the fifth and Mitch Garver would cap off the night with a three run job in the top of the ninth. The Rangers take a 10 nothing for their fifth straight win. They'll go for the four game sweep tomorrow night. Oakland at Houston. The Astros were getting their home run trots on as well. Bottom of the third Alex Bregman blasts a solo homer to left center and it's four nothing. Strohs, Jordan hit a three run job moments before that. Bottom of the seventh Kyle Tucker goes long ball to left center 396 feet to make it six nothing Houston. You know he just eats left-handed pitchers alive. Strolls roll 6-2 to maintain their one-game lead on the Rangers for first in the AL West. Man, it's going to come down to like I love it, right? Day, isn't this isn't what it? it's all about? Yeah, absolutely. Fantastic. Thanks, Thank Larry. We'll be right back. Okay, so are you ready for the State Fair of Texas? Oh, yeah. The big festival kicks off later this month, and most fans will tell you they go for the food. Yeah, 21 new foods have been announced for this year. Some of them include deep fried sushi, cotton candy infused margaritas, okay. and fruity pebble pickles. Hmm. You can see the full list of food right now on KSAT.com and look for this article. Now, the State Fair of Texas runs from September 29th to October 22nd. I don't know about that pickle. I would take the deep fried kishka if they had it. Hey, by the way, beautiful picture of the Bracket Bat Cave. Mike Jones made it out there recently. Have an yeah, awesome. Yeah, I said Kishka, that's right. <laughs> yeah, I know.